Welcome back to the Pain Game YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you haven't already. Today we're back with another MMA news video with Tom Aspinall finding John Jones at an expo event, uh, doing a bit of a face-off, so we're going to analyse that. We've also got Colby Covington and uh, what the fuck's his name again? Ian Gary uh, going back at each other. Um, they want to set up a fight clearly and there's a lot of shit talk about Ian Gary's wife as usual. And uh, Nate Diaz has also tweeted out about Conor McGregor Gregor's contract situation and really confirmed some of our suspicions, I think. So here's big Tom Aspinall headed to the Arnold in Birmingham. It's the bodybuilding expo where he managed to find John Jones. I'm hearing that John Jones is going to be there. So we and John will be having words. We'll be having respectful. On my part, at least, but we'll see. Look forward to it. So he said, I'm going to go there and I'm going to be respectful. Say no more, right? It's Tom Aspinall. He's always respectful. He is the nicest fighter I think I've ever met in my life. And ironically, probably the, the, the most destructive. Protein oh. vibes. Let's see what he's eating. He's got that. Parma ham, I'm a big fan. Uh, some nuts and some eggs. This is what I'm talking about, man. You don't need uh, all of this fancy shit. All this fucking shit. Yeah, remember that guy off uh, Instagram moaning about processed food? He's right. Whole foods. Although I do like protein powder, and that, and that protein shake, especially if they sponsor us. But like, I do, I do do that. He's no, stinks out. Oh my out. god. <laughs> I fucking love this guy. Oh, that stinks out. Oh my god. Yes, rank that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just praising the fucking diet. He's like, it fucking stinks. My man. Too tall, too tall. The thing that hits you about Tom when you meet him, and I'm a big dude, right, is he's tall. He's not necessarily the, the biggest, thickest set guy like Francis Ngarno or something like that, but he's very large, right? He's a big old dude. So you see him in, in coming from a mile off. And here's the thing, right? Let's not, let's not kid ourselves at the Arnold and that, right? There's a lot of dudes who lift weights, who they want to look like tough guys. He's the legit tough guy there. So, like, he is the alpha in that whole entire fucking building. You could argue only John Jones would have a claim to that. But yeah, Tom's the one who's willing to fight. So far, as we know, John Jones hasn't really been about it. All right, is that John Jones there wearing a big fuck off chain? Do this quickly. Do the, the look, at, look at John Jones's face. He's the perfect super fucking villain, isn't he? He's such a fucking wanker. And here's the thing. I already know that, that Tom respects a lot of what John Jones has done in his career. That's why he wants to fight him. Unlike so many other fighters out there, we've got a real champion here who wants to define his career by fighting the best. Just saying hello. Just saying hello. What's going on? There's a little shake. Of hands from John Jones. How are you? Hello, good man. How are you? Okay. Let's hear what they're saying. <laughs> the look of John Jones. This is the thing with Tom, right? Is he's extremely friendly. So him putting his hand on you is like, all right, mate. Like he's not trying to like sun this guy, but obviously John having the fucking ego the size of Texas, like he does, ain't gonna like that. Uh, we'll be having less of that, mate. Right. We're gonna do this thing. I would hope so. I would love to, man. I would hope so. Respect, man. All the best. Respect. All the best. We'll do a quick picture. Sure. Yeah. Let's get it. A face off. No, no, Just no. A... no, no. Okay. No, no, no problem. No, no problem. You see. The truth of the matter is, Tom's saying let's do a face-off to help build hype for the fight, build momentum. John doesn't want to build momentum. Do you know why? Because John Jones has no fucking intention of stepping foot in the cage with that young lion, that actual heavyweight. Tom Aspinall couldn't cut down to light heavyweight unless he chopped the fucking leg off. John wants to have these easier heavyweight fights that he's been having, do two, and then get the fuck on the road. He doesn't have any intention of fighting Tom, in my opinion, at all. But credit to Tom for trying to seize the moment and try and make it happen. And you know the thing with Tom? He's such a respectful dude. If you don't want to do the face-off, he'll, he'll take that. And okay, no problem. But what people are taking this as, as is like, John Jones showed he was the alpha by saying no to the face-off. No, the guy who wants the face-off is the alpha, not the guy who says no. Do you understand? Like, Aspinall is the bigger dude, and that must be unusual. Like, you can see the shoulders and everything. Like, Tom is a, is a big dude. And right now, like, 
John Jones, if we're being honest, he looks more and more like Uncle Phil by the day. Do you see the Fresh Prince? You know what I mean? Like, he, he's getting on a bit. And fair enough, right? But, like, if you want to hold that world title, you should be defending it against the interim champion. I've been over this before. Thanks, John. Appreciate it. Nice to meet you, I would love to have the honour one day. I would love to one have day. the honour. Maybe Thank one you. day. Hope so, man. All, All the right. best. All, All the best. Right. How's everything? It's healing. Go slowly, slowly but surely. Okay. All the best, man. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, man. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks for letting me come up. Thank oh, you. Yeah. I want to fight him, but I don't want to fight in here. <laughs> That's the thing. People look at the kindness of Tom Aspinall and the respectfulness of Tom Aspinall. And I've seen Twitter comments, people being like, eh, say Jones was big bro in him because he said no to the fucking face. Or what? Mate, man, if you want to ride dick, can you please pick a, a more stand-up fighter than a man who roughed his own wife up and his children phoned the cops on him not long ago? Like, let's go there, right? Because I'm just cutting the shit right now. This man had his own children phone the cops on him for the safety of their mother in a Las Vegas hotel. And later that night, he was seen smashing his face into a cop car, crying his eyes out because he was tweaking out on cocaine. Come off it, right? He is not the guy to superhero worship, right? He's not a good dude, man. Tom is actually the guy who's the good dude, yeah? I'm not saying John Jones is the worst person of all time, but he's he's not a great role model here. Do you know what I mean? And people are piping off because he said no to a face off. I'm like, well, wow. Do you know what I mean? How about the dude who wants to fight? Should he not be the one who you're rooting for? Like, as a father, I can't think of a worse thing you can do other than the obvious than ha getting to a stage where your own children f ask the hotel reception, can you please phone the cops because we're scared of dad? Like, and this is a man who people hero worship. He's a fucking arsehole, mate. Oh, Jordy, you're all wrong, mate. It was just one bad night. Give him a break. Yeah, it was just one night, wasn't it? What about the hit and run on the pregnant woman where he crashed into her, injured her, fled the scene of the crime, Came back. Did he come back to check on her? No. Came back to get the rest of his drugs. Just a good dude. So look, I don't believe John has any fucking interest in fighting a beast like Tom Aspinall. And that's why he's like, I'm not doing a face-off and all that. That proves it. You won't even do the thing that you do before the fight, let alone get in the cage with them. Cool. Cool. Move the fuck on. Now I want to call me Covington versus Ian Gary. Greetings, nerds and virgins. It's America's champ, the people's champ. Not a champ. Actually, I don't actually mind Covington in the past, but he did cross the line versus Leon Edwards when he said that stuff about his dad dying. And from that moment on, I'm like, nah, that's too low that. Like, there's just some shit you just can't overlook. Donald Trump's favorite fighter. We're in beautiful, sunny South Florida. Most people, they work 60 years just to get a taste of the good life. This is what I live every day. <laughs> it's just not though. Like, I'm not saying Covington hasn't done all right for himself, but like, you're seeing him getting out of this helicopter. That's probably Donald Trump's just put that up for him, right? Ian Gary, you translucent cut. You wanted my attention? Now you got it. Everybody knows why you want to fight me, Ian. I'm the biggest star in the division. It's big city, bright lights, and the most attention and eyes you're ever going to have on you when it fight. I'll give Covington one thing. He is a fairly big name in the division, but that's because he's... A, you know, a good talker. Unfortunately, like, he's never actually delivered when it matters. And I think Ian Gary's probably looking at him thinking, you're on the decline. I mean, his last fight was a horrendous showing by him. It was the worst I've ever seen him. And it's it's not even because Leon looked that great in that fight. I just think Covington is just slowing down. Physically, you can see he's not what he was. But everybody knows, Ian, you missed your chance. You had your chance in December to step on the same stage as me and have a microphone and say whatever you want to say to me but you were scared. He did pull out of that fight. Apparently he wasn't well or something along those lines. That was right around the time that Ian Gary was under the most amount of fire for all this stuff about him and his wife or whatever. People surmised that he just didn't want to be there at the press conference and get grilled like that. And it would have been bad, but who knows? Do you know what I mean? He might have just have been ill. The one thing that didn't look good is when they posted all those pictures of him in different clothes, but they had the same socks on in every photo. That didn't look convincing. All I did was ask the 5,000 people in attendance, how many people banged your wife? It's not my fault every single one of them rose their hand. If you're scared of that, Ian, if you're scared of words, what do you think it's going to be like when you step in a steel cage with chaos? You just went life and death with a guy that does this part time and is a busboy outback. Dude serves blooming onions for a living. I must admit, 
I wasn't overly impressed with Ian Gary's performance uh, against Jeff Neal. It was meh. And for a guy who I do believe has a lot of potential, I think he definitely will want to step it up in his next fight. But yeah, he was saying, I'm going to do this, that, and the other. And then after the fight, it was like, well, he's a hard fighter. And it's like, mm. you know, at this point, on your rise to the top, usually when you are that top, top level fighter, you find that they KO a lot of fighters. They, they abuse a lot of fighters on the way up because they're just nowhere near the level. And then when they get to the top level, it may get a little bit tighter. So it wasn't a great look for Ian Gary. Why do I got to go down in the rankings to fight some Casper the Ghost looking Irish kid? <laughs> Casper the Ghost, is that the best we could do? Yeah, he's a white guy. <laughs> if you can meet these three stipulations, we got to fight. Stipulation number one, you and that gold digging whore. <sighs> you can't call her that. No, no. Look, I understand, like, we're, we're in the fight game here, right? But, like, you, he's calling out people's dead fathers, their wives. Like, this man is is asking for trouble. Like, it's no wonder Masvidal jumped him. And I don't even like Masvidal at the moment. The way he's talking about Uncle Chael, can't be having it. But he brings this shit on, doesn't he? As you all might have noticed, something's been missing from my MyBookie promos lately. That's because I've been saving that spot for a special someone. <laughs> Layla, <laughs> you want to be a star? You want the spotlight? I got it for you, sweetie. Okay, we get it. He wants Leila to be his, like, girl in the video. That, but he promotes his betting brand or whatever. Like, some of this is kind of funny, but some of it is... It, you just... Oh. Here's the thing. It's making me want to watch the fight more. I can't even lie, right? But I personally don't agree with it going that far. Let's see what Ian Gary said. Listen here, Kobe Chaos Covington. You are in no position to tell me what I should be doing in life. You'll do as you're told. And... Kill! And... Kill! I mean, he's poking fun at the fact that he's lost three title fights, and uh, that's legit. And as much as Covington's talking about Ian Gary's wife, this will probably piss Covington off more because it's the truth. Three stipulations, all of which had nothing to do about fighting, but we're all talking about my wife. Layla, 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 get on your hands and knees and beg. I don't know how you were raised, but women aren't property, and my wife definitely ain't no trophy. You should be focusing on me. I'm the one who's in that octagon with you. I'm the one who's going to punch a hole in your head. So stop swerving me and keep Layla's name out your mouth. Fair. Fair. You're not America's favorite fighter. What you are is a peak underperformer. Ooh. You see, this is the fucking real shit, man. And people might not understand, like, Covington's going at the, the guy's wife, which is a total low blow. But the things he's saying, you can dismiss. What Gary's doing right now is going in on all of the real insecurities that Covington will have about his whole career. He is an underperformer. Like, in, in both... Usman fights, there were opportunities there for him to to take the fight and, 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 and overcome Usman, but he waited too long. And even against Leon, he ended up on top at the end of the fight. Like, where the fuck was that earlier in the fight? You know, like, he, he has talent, but he's never made the most of it, in my opinion. You're the only person in UFC history to lose three world title fights, and you haven't got a single win against anybody in the top 15 right now. I've got to say, and Gary's roasting him, yeah, like, he's killing him. <laughs> so, Kobe, why should I fight you? Boom! I can think of one reason. I challenge you to an I quit match where one of us has to say, I quit. Oh, ah, 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 I quit, I quit. I'm not mad at this idea, but I want to know what the fuck he means by it. And whoever says the words I quit has to retire. Gloves off, sent through the octagon, sayonara, my friend. I'm going to be the final chapter in your legacy of failure. I am going to rid the UFC of Kobe Covington for good, and I'm going to make MMA great again. The make MMA great again bit is quite ironic because obviously he's kind of a Trump guy. I think the idea that loser leaves town is actually a fun idea. I do like that idea. Chael Sonnen, ironically, is like the mentor of Colby Covington, and he was the originator of that when he said Addison Silva, loser leaves town, basically. Whoever loses, you got to leave the UFC forever. Even if it's bullshit, just throw it out there. It's, it adds something. It makes us give a shit, which 99.9% .9 of UFC fighters right now are terrible at. There has never been less stars in the history of MMA. If you're a UFC fighter and you want a star right now, you're fucking useless, because there's no one talking in the room. It's nothing but silence and oxygen. Like, even now, Taporia, who the featherweight belt he's calling out conor mcgregor like what are you doing bro make us care about an actual fight that's actually gonna happen you morons do you know what i mean no no disrespect because i i rate the guy as a fighter but no one's thinking anymore outside of the cage no one has a clue about marketing as much as ian gary said a few things where i'm like it's a bit weird like at least he's trying fucking hell give me some content you
So anyway, speaking of the older generation who actually knew how to entertain us, uh, Nate Diaz has tweeted out in support of Conor McGregor after Conor McGregor said in a recent interview, I was hoping for a December date, then a January date, then it keeps getting pushed back, which is what we've been talking about. Then I lose interest and stop training for a while. That is massive, by the way. Never in the history of Conor McGregor's career has he ever admitted I lose interest and stop training. He's always acting like I'm a beast, I'm a machine, I'm always... Look, we can tell by your performances that there's inconsistencies. If anything, McGregor is like the Tyson Fury of MMA and that he's one of the most inconsistent performers. You can see the drive goes and comes, right? And some, it's been going a lot for a long time. But I did speculate in my last video, is that because of the USA fucking him around? And clearly, that's a factor. He says, but I'm always training, but stop full training and start drinking. Mate he's actually saying the truth. It's the closest thing we've heard to him admitting this is part of my problem here and that the UFC are clearly impacting his mental health through whatever is going on in the background, which is negotiations, clearly. We've been talking about this on the channel. So I'm going to go back, regroup, get my fight date, and then I'm ready to rock. Nate Diaz comments on it. This was me for years before Connor even got here. They want you to die before they let you out of these contracts. This is what I've been saying. And by die, what he means is expire. As a fighter, you have a limited amount of time where you're physically able to perform at the level that you used to. And with every month that goes by, especially coming back from an injury like Connor McGregor's had, you're less good. You are only getting worse. So you need to get in that fucking octagon as quick as humanly possible. Especially when you have two fights left on the contract and you want to then go off and do other things. And I knew they will not be offering you a fight. They will be pushing it back, pushing it back, fucking you around, knowing that the expiry date on your body, which is your, what you're selling as a fighter, is coming closer and closer and closer. And what they're trying to do is force you into re-signing with them so they own you forever. And that's not just your physical body body but it's also your image rights your footage your fight footage ev everything and for everything conor mcgregor's done for the ufc even as someone who's had a back and forth with a guy i empathize with that the man made the ufc more than any other fighter did he should be able to walk out the fucking door whenever the hell he wants for what he's done for that company it's unbelievable nate Diaz says it's up to you to make something pop no one is gonna help you but you free conor McGre mcgregor it's paddy's day in this bitch now mcgregor he's got to get the hell out of this company he's he's got to if he, if he wants to have these mega money fights which he's entitled to in my opinion against the Manny Pacquiao do I want to see it do I fuck but he should have the fucking right to after everything he did for that company it's one thing if he was two three fights into his fucking UFC deal this man built the UFC He's done all he should have to do. They should let him out tomorrow, just out of respect for what he's given that company. And fair enough, if you want him to fight this contract out, fair enough, right? That legally, that's fine. But give him the fucking fights. They're deliberately delaying them as long as they can to hold him and to make him re-sign. It's a fucking disgrace. And I knew this was going on. And now it's got, we've got a little bit of proof because Conor McGregor has acknowledged this tweet from Nate Diaz. Anyway, that's all I've got to say for today. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already too. The Pain Game YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>